So this, this gardening system is modelled on the Back to Eden system. And Paul, when he developed the system, worked out that you use tree mulch to cover your ground to stop the soil from letting go of the water and to build up the underlayer of this wonderful material that has the ability to hold moisture. Now to speed the process up, I've been to the local council and I've actually gathered material from the council which is pre-broken down. So what I do is I put the raw green, fresh green mulch on top and I put a layer of this underneath. And I'm just opening this bed up now so that you can see what's, and there's a whole lot of living organisms in there. This was green pasture about six months ago and it had trees, but we've just started working it over and you can see the worms in there now starting to take place and there's all sorts of other activity going on in, inside the soil. So we're really starting to build the soil up and build some basic organic structures in there. A great communication going on. So what I've done, and you can have actually up to about three or four inches of this green mulch on top. And when we had the really hot weather, this didn't need watering right through that hot period. It was enough to store the water and keep it in the ground. Covering the ground is very, very important and all the elements of that are covered in the Back to Eden video which I thoroughly recommend that everybody should watch. Now we're scraping off this cover off the top at the moment because we don't actually grow the vegetables in the ground cover, we actually grow them in the soil beneath. And the ground cover is just used on top to keep the soil in perfect condition. You've got to always remember that we're farming those microbes underneath the soil and giving a home for the worms and the fungi and all the other materials that are operating. And this leaf mulch on top is absolutely perfect to cultivate that. In this particular situation I'm going to actually be using fish waste. The American Indians planted a fish head. They'd eat the body of the fish and they'd put the, the head of the fish in the hole in the ground and then plant the plant on top of it. It's a very sound idea. It's actually a, a remarkably good way to grow vegetables. So here what I'm doing is going to the local fish shop, getting some bodies and frames and actually creating a trench where I can actually put this material into the soil. Fish was just the most amazing fertiliser. Here what I've done is I've actually minced up the heads and frames and turned them into a liquid. But you can just as easily put the actual body of the fish in. The idea is that you want to cover it with about 150 millimetres of soft soil so that the air can still get down and that will create a very rich base. When the roots reach down into that, the plants will really start pumping away. Here's the biofork now, it's, it's the most universal tool. It does just every little job in the garden. Keeping in mind that it's actually designed to be able to open up the, the ground and not destroy the, the organisms that you've got working for you in the soil. It's modelled very much on the same as any animal that's doing any digging action. It's very ergonomically designed so it follows the shape of your hand. Here we're actually using, I've made some dry fish powder but you could use blood and bone and it's being sprinkled on the top just to integrate as you would. I tend to stick, um, keep using more natural materials. This is another natural material that's great. Coffee grounds. It's also a good idea to put your coffee grounds into the compost bin. It's a slow release nitrogen and it has a lot of trace elements and minerals in it. You just use it very sparingly, just sprinkle it on the top of the ground or as I say you can put it in the compost. Here's the biofork. Now one of the great attributes is when you're trying to remove a plant without damaging the roots, it just so easily lifts out of the pot. Even a stubborn root bound pot will come out. And you can just use that, you can actually use the same tool to create the hole, remove any um, pieces of unwanted material, creating the hole. Now this is a leftover area from our biofuel cell where we've actually made a pile, taken the box off, and now we're actually growing in this rich, you can see all the worms wriggling in there. We're now placing now, this is a comfrey plant, which we're going to use as a material for putting into our liquid tea, for making uh, compost tea. The biofork is such a vital tool to have in the garden. You can turn compost, you can furrow, you can make furrows for seeds, you can cover, you can level. 
you can extract. It's the most useful tool you could ever have. Once you've got it, it's just one tool that fulfills so many roles, you don't have to have a dozen tools.